video we would be discussing some of the fundamental and important concepts of differential geometry. Till now whatever the videos that you have been watching on my channel Physics for Students, those videos have been much more detailed, taking more time, elucidating on the concepts with much more illustrations, examples, charts and graphs and so on. However, I will make this video a little bit shorter so that the concepts are much more clearer but not going too much into the details, especially the mathematical equations. You can use this video for your further studies. In case that you need a reference, you can refer to those videos. So I would be completing and explaining you the important concepts of differential geometry, but not going too much into the mathematical complications using equations and so on. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to this new episode of Introducing Differential Geometry. So what we would be doing is that we will take up step by step some of the fundamental concepts and this video will have subsequent other parts which will come sooner in this channel Physics for Students. So what are the topics that we would be covering? Let us quickly have a look onto that. So first we will understand what is a curvature which is very central in starting differential geometry. We will define a curvature and we will see what are the examples of different curvatures. We will first start also with Euclidean space and then we will further move into hyperbolic and other spaces and we must see what is called a parameterized curves because that is the first and the very chapter which a student learns in differential geometry. We will also see what is called a parametric equation and what are the examples of parametric equation using straight line and helix. So this is these are the topics that we are be covering and we will be quickly going through those topics so that we can understand them without going too much into the mathematical intricacies. So first we will introduce what is called a curvature. Now classical differential geometry is a study of curves and surfaces in the plane and three dimensional space. The word differential indicates that we will be definitely using calculus. Indeed, the basic ingredients of differential geometry are basically multivariable calculus, linear algebra and differential equations. At graduate level, one also requires a great deal of topology, analysis and algebra, but none of it will appear in today's video. Uh, just a point of note that if you really want to know the history of differential geometry, how to study differential geometry, what are the resources, what are the books that you should reach, how will you approach, etc. All of these are covered in my video, How to Learn Differential Geometry and What is Differential Geometry. You can find it in my playlist, Differential Geometry as itself. But primarily, as I was uh, telling, that this would include the basic notions and definitions. So uh, we have defined that what are the three essential parts of differential geometry. Now, a curvature is basically when, when we call that a measure of the bendness of the curve. That means how much the curve is bending. <coughs> Let us see some uh, uh, elementary examples. Now, of the particular interest, the notion of curvature so for curves, this will turn to be fairly simple. Curvature is, as I told you, the basically the bendness of a curve. A straight line should have a zero curvature, whereas a circle should have a curvature which increases as the radius increases. A very large circle should have a very small curvature. And this is an example of what is called a changing curvature. So understanding and quantifying the concepts of these curvatures is our primary goal. So the curvature of the spiral increases as one travels towards the center. So the rough idea is as follows. Uh, you can imagine a curve as a roller coaster along which you travel at a constant speed. The curvature should equal the force you feel necessary to keep traveling along the curve. Okay, so now uh, let us explain why a very large circle, circle should have a small curvature. <laughs> Uh, now we know that for a circle it has a curvature which is equal to the reciprocal of its radius. So the curvature of a circle is the reciprocal of a radius. For example, if the radius is 5, <coughs> the curvature is 1 upon 5. So we generally measure curvature a k equals to 1 upon r. So if I take a circle which has got a radius of 5, the uh, curvature gives 1 upon 5. When I take a uh, bigger radius 10, it gives k equals to 1 upon 10. So that is why you see for a circle if the curvature, a, a, a larger curvature should have a very uh, smaller curvature. So different circles may have different curvature 
based on their radii. The smaller the radius, the larger the curvature. Okay, here is a definition of a curvature. A curved line gradually changes the direction from one point to the next. The rate of this change in direction <coughs> per unit length along the curve is called the curvature. So, we will just show you what is the equation for the radius of a curvature. This is, a, I won't say fairly complicated, but this is a standard way in which we measure the radius of a curvature. So, you see this is the radius of a curvature and this red line, as you see, this is basically the curve. So, a small circle again comes up has a large curvature and a large circle has a small curvature and a straight line has a zero curvature. So, what I can tell from here, if, if you use units of radians to measure the angles, I mean to say 1 radian equals to 180 degrees upon pi, then it turns out that 1 upon curvature is the radius of curvature. In other words, it is the radius of the arc, of the circle of an arc, which would most closely approximate that part of the curve. So, state it in another way, if the direction of the curve change at a rate of 1 radian per inch, then the radius of the curvature would be 1 inch. <coughs> okay, so I would like to demonstrate a simple curvature here. So, here you see the line starts out with a short straight zero curvature labeled as A. Then the curvature rapidly increases in the clockwise direction in the section labeled B. Then decreases back towards C, passes through zero at D and then becomes negative. In the sense of curving counterclockwise in the uh, uh, region labeled as E then passes back through 0 at F and become positive again at G before becoming very, very small in the region leveled as H. So, from here we can deduce that when a curve bends back on itself, one says that its curvature has become negative or reversed its sign and the shape of lines and surfaces can be entirely defined in terms of the variations of the curvature from point to point. A uh, further curvatures, which is uh, we are not showing in this video, but I have shown in it earlier video, which are related to non-Euclidean and further complex curvature like dome shape. You get a saddle shape, which has got a negative curvature and further complicated curvatures. So, this is a very, uh, I would say, naive and a very simple example of what is a curvature. And now we know, now MOOCs, we will now move to the next part of our video, where we start with a very elementary, what is called the Euclidean space. So, the Euclidean space, the classical differential geometry, is usually denoted and conducted on Euclidean space En. However, it is important for us to distinguish from Rn. So, what we can say that Rn is a set of uh, n tuples of real numbers. These can be written uh, either as row or column vectors up to your choice, and we can write it as something like this. So, Rn equals to x1, x2 goes up to xn where x sub i, which are the numerals, uh, are a set of a uh, family of the member of R. So, in this course, Rn is nothing more than the coordinate space. It is not assumed to have any uh, additional vector space structure and certainly uh, uh, no dot product. So, En is the set of Rn together with the usual notion product. So, remember that I just told you that it is not assumed to have any additional vector space structure and certainly no dot product, but En is a set of Rn together with the usual notion of a, notion of a dot product. And we usually write this as column vectors, which are denoted by bold face, which is something like this. So, x is in bold and this helps us to distinguish vectors in Euclidean space from the coordinates. Okay, just to refresh our memory in case that we have, you have forgot or want to recall. So, if A equals to uh, this one, A1, B1 and B equals to B1, B1 and B2, then these are the two vectors of E2. Then the dot product of A and B is this. The length of A is given as this and the angle between theta and A and B satisfies this. So, what we can tell is in this class Rn will always have n equals to 1 for curves, for n equals to 2 for surfaces and so on. Similarly, En will always have n equals to 2 or 3 and it is, uh, if a definition in result is both true, then En and E2 and E3 will be just written as En, as we will see. Okay, I will just show you a few examples 
uh, to demonstrate how it happens. So let x of t equals to cos t sin t, which is obviously where t is a family, uh, it includes the family of R. This defines a function this, the components of x of these functions are denoted as x this. x1 t equal to cos t, x2 t is equal to sin t and it is perfectly acceptable that we can write in this notation and whatever the notation that you prefer. But make sure that you do not confuse uh, with the x and here you see that this is two dimensional so we are talking of E2. Now let us take another example where x equals to u v u square plus v square where u comma v is a member of r or, or r squared. I have written as r squared can be r also. So this defines the function x of this right and the components of these functions are x u comma v right and uh, it would be u y u comma v v and z u comma v equals to u square plus v square. So uh, now this is a fairly simple example that's just important to remember that these examples later will describe a circle in the plane and a paraboloid on three dimensions. And here you see that it is E3 and the reason is quite obvious. Okay, so now we come to the next part of our video which is very important and central when we are starting with differential geometry, what is called a parameterizing curves in Euclidean space. But before that we need to understand what is a parameter. So here is a simple definition. Uh, in mathematics and more specifically in geometry, parameterization or parameterization is the process of finding parametric equations of a curve, a surface or more generally a manifold uh, which is on higher dimensions defined in implicit function. So parameterization is a mathematical process of expressing the state of a system or a model or a function of some independent quantities called parameters. So once we mention them it becomes independent and these are the parameters. The state of the system is generally determined by a finite set of coordinates and the parameterization thus consists of one function of several real variables. Now for example the position of a point that moves in a curve in three dimensional is determined to the time that it reaches the point when starting with x, y and z and we can call the coordinate of the point thus parameterized as x equals to f of t, y equals to g of t and z equals to h of t where t denotes the parameter of time. So such a parametric equation completely determines the curve without the need of any interpretation of t as time and this is what is called a parametric equation of the curve and this is sometimes abbreviated as a parametric curve uh, but a similar uh, the basic idea is that the parametric equation of a surface considering the functions t and u. So this is a very simple yet a clear definition of what is a parametric equation. Now uh, in uh, in general if you want to define parameterized curve remember these are differentiable curves. So a parameterized differentiable curve in E n is a smooth function of this x equals to i goes up to of a sub interval i equals to a comma b of the real number line r into e n which is the euclidean space uh, going up to n now this is a simple uh, graph and its velocity or tangent vector at t0 uh, which is a member of i is the vector x prime t0 and in terms of the components we can easily write as x1 t0 x x prime 1 t0 x prime 2 and it goes up to xn now remember that smooth means differentiable with continuous derivatives. So we take the quotient and exist for every t is a member of i and that the function x prime t is continuous. The fact remember that we are differentiating a vector valued function is of no concern. We are not dividing by a vector in the above quotient. Okay, so if you take a straight line for constant vectors a, b which is uh, these two straight lines a, b. Uh, uh, which is a member of E n, the parameterized curve will be defined as this, very simple. It describes line through the point A and B with position vectors respectively A and B. Okay, so uh, uh, we can uh, further write, so this is an example, okay, let me show you once more. Uh, this I have taken it from internet because it's very difficult to manually draw. Uh, this is a helix, right? And we all know what helix is. So we take uh, x of t equals to cos t sin t and the function x uh, which goes from r onto e3 describes the helix. So we can do further, you know, 
a lot of parameter combination i mean it's a permutation combination visualizing the helix from the top etc i think i have uh, covered one part of the helix in one of my uh, videos in uh, uh, differential geometry but don't worry i will be covering up more now here is something which i would like to show you now this is an example uh, which is uh, which is a tangent line and we can say that a parameterized differential curve of x which goes from i up to n we can define a tangent line t0 with the position vector x t0 and it is itself parameterized which is this one which leads to this and for example the tangent line to the helix at t0 equals to pi upon 3 can be described as this you can later check on the equations if you want so this is an example of parameterized curve on a helix we have shown a parameter sky on straight line with the position vector now if i show you something like this right so you see that it is uh, it has got certain corners i mean to say at x equals to 0 and it is not differentiable there in this uh, uh, this illustration which has got what is called the cusps so that is also that it is not differentiable at t equals to 0 so the question is that are they differentiable and if they are not differentiable what are they actually called and that would be covering in the next part of the video. So that's all for today. I think I have given a kind of a brief idea on what is a, a curve, uh, what are the different types of curves, uh, a straight line, how it uh, starts with it, a Euclidean space, how you can mention the curves, the straight line helix, and what is a parameterized curve. But we will continue on those parameterization because we will see how corners and curves, cusps are being differentiated, etc. And that is how we will do, do the further. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, please put up your comments and do let me know if you have anything further to share. Please do subscribe, like and uh, on my channel Physics for Students. Click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from, stu uh, from Physics for Students. So this is Seanak signing off for today's video on differential geometry. But remember that we are still left with two questions unanswered how these corners and cusps, cusps are differentiable at all and what are they called if they are at all differentiable or not which is the topic of the next part of the video. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next part which is coming up in this channel Physics for Students in my place is Differential Geometry. Till then goodbye and stay safe and stay safe. Thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time and patience. If you want to connect with us and provide further feedback, comment or suggestions please email us at contact.physicsforstudents at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. See you soon in the next video.